So in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Sala asks Indy, do you have a plan? And Indy responds, I'm making this up as I go along. Don't really have a plan. And for that movie, it 100% fit. That made the movie 10 times more fun than it already was, watching Indiana Jones just rambunctiously try to figure out how to get out of the situation was fun as hell for Raiders of the Lost Ark and the following films after that. This movie, however, is literally trying to figure it out as they go along. They have no idea how to end this thing, they have no idea what to do with this thing, hence why it's so goddamn long. But it is a summer blockbuster, but it's a very con convoluted one at that. This is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, this is my review for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny starring Harrison Ford, Mads Mikkelsen, Boyd Holbrook, Phoebe Bridger Waller, I believe, no, Phoebe Waller Bridge, that's her name, and it was directed by James Mangold, and our story follows our beloved Indiana Jones on one last hurrah, where he runs into his goddaughter, and she's searching for the Dial of Destiny, which her father was obsessed with, so Indiana Jones and her embark on this journey where they have to find the Dial of Destiny, basically stop Mads Mikkelsen, who's a Nazi, and has his Nazi scheming plans trying to take this Dial of Destiny and do something very Nazi-esque with it and that's basically what the movie is. I mean, I'm not trying to go too complicated or too deep into the plot because truthfully, they don't really care about going too in-depth with the plot. They really want to make this as plain as simple as possible and this is just a, a fun, action-packed, popcorn, you know, popcorn filling in your face, summer blockbuster. That's the gist of what this movie is. It's nothing more, nothing less. So let's get into what I liked and what I didn't like about the film. All right, so as far as what I liked about the film, all right, I'm gonna start here. The movie as a whole was a lot better than what I was anticipating it to be. Truthfully, the trailers never sold me on this movie. It never really gave me a reason as to why we need to see Indiana Jones again in theaters. Now, granted, I can, I can admit I'm not the biggest Indiana Jones fan. I can admit that the movies are amazing as far as... I know there's a Crystal Kingdom of the Crystal Skull controversy out there where people absolutely hate that movie. Me, personally, I ain't seen that movie since I was like 12. I saw it a few times when it came out in theaters, and then like I said, I haven't seen it since I was really young, so... Personally, to me, that movie still holds up. I'm not going to go revisit it to see, you know, if it doesn't because I really rather not break my image of what the Crystal Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is. But I more recently watched uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and Last Crusade. And I definitely get the obsession with the character and why Indiana Jones is so popular and why Harrison Ford... Uh, I always want to say Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, you know prefers to play these type roles versus Han Solo. I know he has his, you know, issues with Star Wars and stuff like that, but he is grateful to Star Wars for starting his career. He just loves his character a bit more, and I can see why, because Harrison Ford in this movie was fantastic. He actually gave a very, very good performance as uh, Indiana Jones. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I said, this movie really surprised me with, honestly, how intense the action set pieces were like the opening scene to this movie is actually really really good it's actually like really really good like it makes me it completely washed away any doubt as far as like being entertained i i like any yeah any doubt i had as far as like being entertained by this movie no that they, they completely wiped that away within the first like five minutes not even the first five minutes they really get down to the action within the first like three this movie really puts the pedal to the metal really fast really hard tries to be really over the top and it does work because i appreciate i mean i appreciate them going for a little bit more over the topness the previous indiana jones installments like watching the older movies now like the fight scenes are really funny just because of how over the top they were and over dramatic in in the sense of being over dramatized like that like the way they swing the punches they're just so over dramatized and i appreciate them kind of going for the over the top notion in this movie here because we're watching harrison ford be old as hell trying to still be in indiana jones so you know realism is going to get left at the door and i promise you there is not a speck of realism in this movie this man indiana jones is superman 
Indiana Jones can survive the most we and I know at this point we've seen him survive a nuclear explosion in a refrigerator so at this point like you guys would probably be surprised about how shocked I am about how much this man can actually endure and survive this dude is like probably 80 something in the film and he's still surviving and enduring the most ridiculous things possible I mean the be like I said the beginning of this film sets the tone for all the action set pieces and just how crazy and over the top this movie is going to be this movie gets into fast and furious levels of over the top action and I can say like I said it really wasn't an issue for me I actually appreciated them doing that because it made this movie a summer blockbuster and made it a lot of fun another thing I liked about this movie I personally enjoyed Phoebe Waller-Bridge's um, portrayal as Helena, I believe her name was. She was a good side character to me. I know that, I understand that her character motivations are kind of all over the place because she is trying to find this dial of destiny to fill a hole in her about her father's work and her pat and his past. And at the same time, she is this thief who, you know, is looking out for herself and she is kind of you know on indie side but in the same at the same time she's in it for herself so there are a lot of convoluted and conflicted things dealing with her character i'll get to that and as far as the things is what i didn't like but as far as her portrayal phoebe bridger phoebe waller bridges there's a lot of names phoebe waller bridges portrayal as Helena, I found to be very entertaining. I honestly enjoyed her monologue on a boat scene where they, where you know she's trying to distract, make a distraction, and she's doing a very good job at it. I thought she was actually having a lot of fun on screen, and personally, I love to see other actors have fun on screen. I love to see people, you know, just having a great time being in the movie, being in this universe, being in the role. Phoebe Waller Bridges, she captured all that. She absolutely had a great time being being this character and you can see that on screen and I'm having fun watching her so I can't really complain about that another thing I could say I like this about this movie well like I said yeah the action scenes were out of this world they really surprised me I'll say this they really capture the adventure essence of Indiana Jones the adventure is all over this movie this is nothing but a two hour and 38 minute action-packed adventure like that's literally what you want from this movie and I can understand why a lot of people love it but as many reasons as people are going to come out loving this movie, I promise you there are just as many problems, if not more, with the movie, and I'm going to get into those now. Let's do this. All right, so as far as what I didn't like about the movie, I'm going to start with this. My biggest, biggest issue with this movie is the runtime. This is the longest Indiana Jones movie by far. The longest movie they've made so far is Last Crusade, which I think came in at two hours and seven minutes. This movie is 30 minutes longer than that. And you know how long this movie is? I mean that in the sense of you know how much like they could have cut out? They could have cut 30 minutes of this movie. And I promise you, I feel like if they would have cut 30 minutes of this movie, this thing would have been a lot better than it already was. Like I said, I, I, I was thoroughly surprised with the film. I had a much better time than I thought I would because those trailers did not sell me. But this movie is way too damn long. Normally, run times don't bother me as long as it's like kind of like in the 10 to 15 minutes too long range. This movie was 30 minutes too just way way too long and i mean like the things that they were filling in the run times with i'll give an example there's a chase scene that happens between indiana jones and you know his group mads mickelson and his group and then there's this third party that comes in out of nowhere who they're they're not necessarily like love interest for phoebe bridger wallers or, or phoebe waller bridge but they they're like it's her love interest from a past from the past it's like somebody she dealt with from the past just so they can add more depth to her character they add this random third party group into this chase that just makes this chase scene probably like seven or ten minutes way longer than it needed to be it's just it's just like really overdone at this point and personally it's like Throughout the movie, you're going to have plenty of moments where you're going to want to be excited, you're going to want to cheer, you're going to want to throw popcorn in your face. Like, seriously, there are plenty of moments in this film where you're having a damn good time. And there are just as many moments, that I promise you, that you are bored out of your goddamn mind with your hand on your face, waiting for this scene to be over because it's nothing but a bunch of just explanations and just a bunch of dialogue that honestly could have been told to us a little bit cooler. I don't know. These are like, they, they just do a lot. Uh, in this movie like i said they follow the raiders of the lost ark notion of they're just making this up as they go along because 
like I said, the characters' motivations are all over the place. And before I really dig into like Phoebe Bridger Waller's character or Phoebe Waller Bridges, I'm gonna fuck that name up the entire video probably. But I want to really talk about my disgust for what they did with Mad Mickelson's Mads Mickelson's character. He was given the No Time to Die slash Spectre treatment. If you don't know what that is, No Time to Die and Spectre were movies that can't work. They're James Bond's movies. But when I say when I say that Mads Mikkelsen got that treatment, the villains in those movies, Spectre and No Time to Die, Christoph Waltz and Spectre and Rami Malek and No Time to Die, were both criminally wasted, in my opinion. Those were villains where, the, well, essentially... Giving that treatment just means that the movie was given a villain with a very big name. They just didn't give that villain the treatment that or the name the treatment that they deserved. Like we deserve to have a lot of much better or more impactful villainous performance from Mads Mikkelsen here. We just didn't get it. One thing that really, really, really pissed me off about the character, the way they portrayed these two's relationship in the trailer, Indiana Jones and Mads Mikkelsen, that they like he they're from each other's past. So you think that's going to be the driving force of this movie. First of all, this dude gets into an accident where nine times out of ten, honestly, ten times out of ten, you're not like the accident that this guy gets into, you're not even gonna remember what the hell happened that day, let alone that month. Like, let alone maybe the last two months. That guy, he, like, Mads Mikkelsen gets in a crazy-ass accident. So, I can kind of forgive them for, you know, not, you know, really digging in on the, you know, the past self. But, like, once these two, or, like, the past stuff between the two. But once these two meet in the present day, it's like Mads Mikkelsen just looks at him, like, at Indiana Jones as, like, just another guy just, you know, in his way. Not really anybody who's, like pivotally important to stopping his plans and things like that although that is what indiana jones is madge mickelson does not treat him as such at least when they first meet and then beyond that it's kind of just like indiana jones is pissed at this dude because he's a nazi indiana jones hates indiana jones hates nazis his hate towards him is already going to be justified this dude's however mads mickelson's character's just motivations and things it, it's just as if like the way and honestly like Mads Mikkelsen, the way he's delivering his lines and the way he's, you know, portraying his character, it, it's as if, like, he's very mellow about it. Like, he doesn't really care. Like, he doesn't really, like, it's kind of like just like the regular Mads Mikkelsen face where he's just unfazed. He's unimpressed by what's going on. And truly, that that's just what led to me being unimpressed by his performance in this movie. Like, he was he was good. But I just personally felt like he was criminally wasted. He could have been a much better villain. On top of that, Boyd Holbrook, who is a immense talent in Hollywood. He worked up with James Mangold on Logan. He was one of the villains in that movie. He is a great actor, and he was criminally underused in this movie. He was just used as another bumbling henchman. He's much more than a bumbling henchman. I really did not like what they did with his character at all in this movie. Personally, you could have took what you did with the runtime and use that to fix these characters and make them a little more impactful. You had a really good cast of villains here, and you kind of wasted them. I don't know who the big, like, swole guy is that their henchman... Uh, I'm trying to look up his name. I don't, like, they had a henchman who's, like, a really, really big dude. Personally, if you're going to get a guy that size to be in your movie, I prefer you rather just get Alan Richardson. Yeah, I finally uh, got the guy's name from Fast X or Blue Mountain State or what does he what does he play on Amazon Prime Reacher? Yeah, if you're going to get a guy that size to be a, a menacing, you know, henchman, just get Alan Richardson to fill the part part. He's perfect for all those roles. But on top of all that, like I said, there was just a lot of conf confusing stuff going on like i said this runtime is just way too long there's just a lot of confusing stuff going on as far as the plot as far as character motivations as far as just what the hell we're doing in certain parts of the film i'll, I'll talk about this i'll talk about the characters still be, and then we'll get to what the dial of destiny part about this film is just completely through threw me off but as far as the characters like i said phoebe phoebe waller bridge's character she's kind of all over the place with her motivations because you can't necessarily tell whose side she's on and that being like if she's on her own side indie side their side it's like she's kind of just being all over the place but personally like i said I, I don't really fault that as far as like the characters you know issue that you know she's only doing what she can with the written material she's given but as far as just like it her motivations making sense to us nah she's all over the place indie's motivations oh my god towards the end of this movie guys you can really, really tell they had no idea where to go with this thing. I mean, we are, when I'm talk, telling you we are going all over the place with this movie, first of all, they talk about what the Dial of Destiny can do throughout the film, 
but it's like once we get to the dial of destiny doing what the dial of destiny does we're two hours and 15 minutes into this thing already on top of that at that point i don't really care what the dial of destiny can do and once we get into the dial of destiny and you know it's doing what it's supposed to where we go from there feels like a completely different movie and i it's crazy because they, they've been talking about it the entire time building it up to what this thing can do who possessed this thing first where where we're going to go with it what we're trying to do they talk it up the entire movie but it's like once we get there oh my god we're, we're in a whole nother universe literally and figuratively and it just it completely feels just out of place it feels like this is not where this movie was supposed to go but we're here now and honestly watching that makes me kind of understand where people were coming from with kingdom of the crystal skull people have a problem with the alien aspect of that movie i have a problem with what we did with this movie i can't necessarily tell you what specifically we did or where we went with the dial of destiny but it's just not it didn't work for me personally at all and in these motivations like i said towards the end of this movie are all over the place they did not know how to send this character off whatsoever james bond i loved the way they sent james bond off that's the like no time to die the only problem i really have with that movie is rami malik and just his incredibly criminally wasted ta uh, time because he's an immense talent but no Time to Die gave James Bond a great send-off. This movie here, however, did not personally give Indiana Jones the send-off I expected it to. And that's crazy because the director of this movie gave Wolverine one of the greatest send-offs in movie history. He gave that character an incredible send-off. So it's like, why couldn't you have done the same here? Personally, he did give Indy a send-off, but it's not one that feels earned. It's not one that necessarily, that necessarily feels like it's what we need. It's not even one that necessarily feels like it's satisfying like i'm not even the biggest indie fan and i personally wasn't satisfied with that ending i felt like they just really didn't know what to do with the character didn't know how to end it didn't know necessarily what to do with harrison ford or didn't even know what the repercussions were if they were to do certain things with said character they just you know were trying to play it really safe and personally it just didn't work for me so that's that's my rant on a lot of the stuff that just didn't really work for me in this film like i said it, it is an enjoyable time i did like it a lot more than i thought i would but it has just as many problems as it does good things and if not the problems kind of stick out a little more to me like i said personally if this movie was like even 10 to 15 minutes shorter i probably would have been a lot more happy with it but it just gets to a point where it's like way too long and i'm thinking to myself am i the only person like feeling this way i'm looking to like my theater was pretty packed so i'm looking to the side i'm looking to like i'm looking into the crowd i'm seeing other people that like doing what i'm doing at moments like literally being bored at times being on the edge of their seat at times being like oh my god at times and then at the other time we're just shaking our heads going wait what like i said realism is left at the door at the front door there's no speck of realism in this movie whatsoever. Personally, there's this one scene where they're driving this tiny ass little go kart. It's not a, it's not a go kart, but it's like a, it's a very tiny ass little vehicle through these tight ass fucking stairways in this city. And I promise you, that that shouldn't even have been possible for that scene to be filmed. That joint went on for way too long because if that was real life, that little thing would have tipped over by the first stare that they hit. That this movie really goes a little crazy with it with you know all the action set pieces, but it is something that you're gonna enjoy. And overall, guys, look, is it the best send-off that Indiana Jones could have gotten? No. Is it a movie where it proves to you why we needed another Indiana Jones? For me personally, no. But it is a very fun summer blockbuster. It does copy a lot of you know other summer blockbusters and what they tried to be I, I see a lot of hints of honestly it's weird I, I feel like this is what jurassic world dominion tried to be but completely failed at and indiana jones picked up in you know places that they failed at as far as being a very entertaining movie but it's it, this is a movie that really copies other summer blockbusters it as far as the plot and the villains go they don't really give much care to them in my opinion they could have been done a whole lot better and that would have made for a much better movie but Regardless, this is still a fun time at the theater, so for all time, for all those reasons and so many more guys, I'm going to give Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright, so Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment below your thoughts on the movie, guys. I really do appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. Look, this is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.